After this is the Big 12. Barrett Sally, who covers mainly the SEC, but betonline.ag, the Big 12 Conference Championship odds. K-State, Utah, Kansas, and then Arizona and Tech are among those with single or better odds to win or to play, to, to, to win the conference championship in 24. Yeah, um, UCF, interesting that they're kind of just right out of it. Iowa State, we just talked about. Um, Oklahoma State, who played for it last year, kind of in the middle. Like Again, Vegas kind of feels how I think we do about Alan Bowman a, a year two. It's just that's where I feel at Oklahoma State. I think everything else is going to be fine, but thinking Alan Bowman is going to be healthy for a second year in a row, to me, is just a big mental stretch. But I think Kansas State with Avery Johnson has got to be your favorite early on. And then when you see Utah, especially given if Cam Rising can come back and be the Cam Rising we saw two years ago, uh, that's going to be a really special team to watch. And 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 Kansas with a healthy Jalen Daniels is a is a team that is going to be really gonna tough I think they're going to be good be. whether Daniels – I mean, Daniels makes them even better, yeah. but I think they're going to be good no matter what, just the way that Lightpole's built that team. Yeah, just starting off with the uh, top tier there, the single digits. Uh, yeah, Kansas State, Utah seem like the the no-brainers. I think Kansas could get some conversation, and, and rightfully so, but uh, I think that uh, there are you know some question marks, particularly with Daniels' health and not having the Jason Bean option that t that you were able to rely on so often. So uh, what does that look like? But um, yeah, even if Jalen Daniels is back and fully healthy, I, I'm not quite ready to put them over Kansas State or Utah, but having them there at number three, I think, is more than fair and uh, a great spot for them to be in Arizona I mean that's how, how do they lose their head coach and they lose like no ground whatsoever in in these ratings or in these these odds I mean this yeah, is, is probably what me. they would have had if they were had Jed Fish coming back so yeah. I, I don't know how they've not dipped at all I mean that's great uh, for Arizona if the feeling out there is that they're just going to be the same because you've got um, your your guys like Fafita and McMillan coming back. I mean, maybe that's what it, I guess that's ha that's what it has to be based on um, since you've lost your your head coach there. So uh, that one's that one stands out to me as a little bit high, just given the the changeover uh, tech. I mean, it's year three for Joey McGuire and company. They came out of the gates uh, last year in the off season, like really hot and heavy and promoting and, and the feeling of, of they were going to be right there in the thick of things in the Big 12 race. Recruiting's going really well. They didn't end up really being in the Big 12 race, but you've got Micah Hudson rolling in. You got Taj Brooks coming back. You got Baron Morton coming back. I mean, they definitely have a couple of areas where they need to continue to improve. Um, but I think that there's enough coming back with Texas Tech that, yeah, you feel like they're going to be able to line it up and run Taj Brooks. And then on occasion, Baron Morton's going to be able to hit some big passes or, or some big runs. So um, they make sense. And uh, UCF, that is, that is also one that's a little bit high it feels like uh, as far as uh that i guess i guess i'm already going past that top group now the single digits but yeah we could go i mean there's yeah ucf like, seems a little high i think iowa state is going to be really really good i think oklahoma state is low um i i, I get the whole if alan bowman can stay healthy but he did just stay healthy for yeah. the most part last year and so why are we didn't why are we ignoring them and pretending like not everybody's coming back on a Mike Gundy led team? I, I don't understand the thought process here. Maybe I need to look at their schedule and there's something that I'm missing, but I don't know. I feel like you're giving the benefit of the doubt to some other teams and to not give them one at this point with all that they've done is just kind of stupid, uh, honestly. So there's there's something that I'm clearly missing because I feel like they should be a little bit higher. Um, but, yeah, we could go on and on and on with this. It makes me still get, like, anxiety thinking about trying to pick 1 through 16 uh, when we get that ballot sometime in May or June from the Big 12 office. And that's an ugly number for BYU. I mean, that's one where when we did our little over-under win totals, I think I went over with them, and then that we went into a weekend, I think. And I, that one I felt weird about saying at the time because that one I'd honestly not really given a whole lot of thought to because, I mean, we're talking about 16 teams here, so I thought I had, and then we got to it, and I was like, oh, shoot. And I was like, over, because I just feel like they're going to be better than last year. And at, then at the same time, I – stewed on it a little bit and I can totally see how you'd go the opposite direction with BYU at this point so that's one that I might very well change later this summer we'll see uh, we'll see what happens the next few months but I uh, don't love don't love it seeing them in, in last place if you're a BYU fan that's for sure question from Lorenzo Hayes where would KU play if they happen to in get into the playoff uh, it's Children's Mercy Stadium uh, and also they'll play some games this year at Arrowhead where the Chiefs play I'm sure when they're not at Arrowhead, it's when the, the Chiefs. And two. 
when the Chiefs are playing maybe a game that yeah. week. Yeah. I think it's five yeah. at Arrowhead and two at, at, at Children's Mercy um, in, in Kansas City there. So, yeah, they should um, – they, uh, look, they're going to be good. Uh, I can't the playoff uh, and then host the game is what the question is. Yeah, where yeah. would they play if okay. they were yeah. a team that was in the playoff uh, and had to play a, a game at home in the first round? It not yeah. had to, but had an opportunity yeah. to play a game uh, at home in the first but, round. But uh, Colorado at fifty-one, I can't wait for the media member who uh, asked uh, who the, asked uh, that question. Yeah, that's a, you know, and and what the response comes after that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure he'll just use it as fuel. I mean, it's whatever. It's a it's a preseason Vegas odd. I mean, it doesn't really matter in the long run all that much, but I'm sure that it will be used like every other little tiny little bit of disrespect is. I mean, you, we've practically got coaches that are pulling like a, a tweet from just some completely random person that, you know, could be like a 12-year-old who's just talking trash, and they, tr they treat it like it was said by – the ghost of Keith Jackson or something. Like Kirby you know? Smart it's like, did before Yeah, TCU. like Kirby Smart's total BS rallying cry. I mean, you're a great coach. You you know what you're doing. You're you're the man. But, like, the, the, this, the disrespect card being pulled by Georgia is just it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just, Georgia. it's just ridiculous. There's there's no reason for that. But, hey, I'm not going to doubt Kirby Smart. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that'll use... That'll be used as a disrespect thing by, by Dion or whoever else on this list. I mean, Willie Fritz, uh, 100 to 1... I think they're going to be much better with Willie Fritz at the helm, just nerves-wise. Uh, you know, record-wise is another story, but that one's going to be really interesting because I don't, I don't know that I feel like they'll finish right there at the very bottom uh, with the changeover, but, but who knows? Who knows? All right, so there we are with that. Uh, Craig saw that earlier. Uh, you, those, uh, those odds and, and picks and all that, you eat them up, we eat them up, we love to talk about them, and so there's the one there with Bet Online with the uh, odds for the Big 12 championship. And I don't know what they'll be like sometime when they get to August. It, it might change slightly, but probably not too much unless there's some sort of a major injury or change somewhere. I think uh, Iowa State's a little low. I think Oklahoma State's a little low. I think uh, TCU is just a complete question mark about how much better they might be. I think West Virginia looks a little low, given the expectations on that list, too. Um, not sure that those align so far based on what I've seen. West Virginia expectations after last year versus uh, the expectations of the outside world. So they might have a, a little bit more chip on their shoulder for Neil Brown. Speaking of motivation and, you know, he, he legit, though, had a beef. Like, he, he wasn't Kirby Smart pretending like Georgia gets no respect. He legit, like, they had the wrong colors at the podium. They voted him last. They voted he him last. Mad because like, he said, does anyone understand – that the offensive line, and they had like four of the five right. starters coming back, and they were nasty on the offensive line with Frazier and others. And they lose a guy like Frazier, so yeah. that may be where some of them slipping is. But, yeah, they're just right there. Gary Green could play offensive line. He's that tough. Yeah, like. past the, the middle. So that's not quite probably what you expected, uh, given all they've got returning and, and just coming off of last year. So I noticed that as well. But, yeah, I, there's a story with each one of these. I, I do wonder if uh, Kirby Smart somehow hacked all the phones of his – team and like just send in tweets of like georgia sucks i yeah. feel like i saw <laughs> I mean, like, a coach last year i feel like i saw a situation where a guy was like basically running a burner account and was creating stuff and then retweeting I think it was at colorado yeah i think it was yeah. it, was, it was somewhere I, yeah. I vividly remember there being a situation oh. where an assistant coach had like a burner and he was talking trash about his own program and that got found out that it was a burner so that absolutely goes on yeah. probably way more than we know because that's just, I guess, such fuel for guys. I find it ridiculous, honestly. But um, I, I'm sure that probably happens a lot more than we realize. I watched Des Bryant have an absolute meltdown in his locker after a game because a guy in his basement tweeted that he saw a video of him laughing after Ricardo Lockett got hurt. And he was, like, blaming all of us media. And we're yeah, like, yeah. can you show us the tweet? And he showed he – showed Clarence Hill is like, like it's this guy, Baby Garden Five Twelve, and, and yeah. Chill's like I have no idea who that is. Like, two followers, all these people, both are porn bots. That, yeah, all the people that are the media that cover you are standing here outside your locker right now. Oh all my of God. us together collectively watching this rant. Can he? Yeah, you know, that, but that, they. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to loathe anything Chicken Hawk Jayhawks, but Daniels, if healthy all season, will be quite. A strong offense to deal with. You're yeah, exactly I mean, they right. do lose Andy Carl Nicky, though. I mean, and so mm -hmm. Jeff Grimes coming in there as OC, running the wide zone. That's all too familiar with Kansas, so that should be a very easy transition. But is he as good of a play caller as Andy Carl Nicky, who 
Um, obviously, a lot of people really enjoyed, especially the X's and O's folks, really enjoyed breaking down his offenses and how creative he was and, and how creative he could be with the Jalen Daniels. So we didn't get to see that much last year, obviously. But that is one where I think Grimes is a, a really good hire, but he is filling some some pretty – Good looking shoes uh, that that uh, were left over, so that that could, I could see where that actually goes back a little bit, and maybe that's where some of the thinking is. I, I don't know. Let's go back to that list if you can one more time, uh, Garrett. Now, let, don't look at the names of the schools, but think about which of the head coaches of those schools would go and dip into the fake burner phone. I don't think many of the no. Big Twelve coaches would. I think. No. Like almost none of them that I'm yeah. going you know, off the top Gundy of my head. Likes, I'm not saying Gundy would do that. Uh, Gundy would not. He wouldn't do that. Do that. But he does kind of like to have that underdog type feeling. Yeah, and, but and, I mean, he, most coaches he do. doesn't have to create it though. They have it. I mean, look yeah. at that. They're right there in the smack yeah. middle. What do you have to say? You're yeah. you're you're Oklahoma State. You're just in this bad boy. What two of the last three years? And and they still and you got most of your team coming. You got like a twelfth year senior quarterback and. You're still middle of the pack. I, I I take that as disrespect and don't need to create anything. But I I don't know. I I don't think there's really anybody on this list that would would go that route. And maybe I still I cannot see Kalani Sataki. I don't see any of them. Uh, that, now Dion did use the motivational thing throughout most of the early year, and it worked. And he would cross check people, and then eventually they just started getting. Loss after loss after loss, and he kind of let that go. But they I don't. Was, I don't see him doing. that. I don't think he has to create it though. That's the thing is Colorado gets enough as it is, whether it's you know good or bad. That when it goes bad, he's not going to have to look very far for some criticism. He can just open up his phone and, and find plenty of it in his mentions, much less searching around in Shador's mentions or Travis Hunter's mentions. So the hate comes with Colorado pretty easily, and you saw that as they started to slide last year. So, yeah, I, I don't think that um, he's they're going to have to really create that, but um, – I'll give, I'll give some like I'll give Kenny I don't think Kenny, Kenny Dillingham would do that so yeah I don't think anybody really would need to uh, in in this case all right so there we are the the uh, bet online with their Big Twelve Conference Championship odds and of course at the end of 